In this video, I am going to tell you what is multiprocessing and how and when to use it in Python. So keep watching. Hi there, welcome to Saral Gyan. In this video, I am going to tell you what is multiprocessing and how to use it in Python. This video is going to little long because I tend to explain few topics before actually moving to multiprocessing as I think you should know about few things beforehand to have a better grasp on multiprocessing. The first one is synchronous and asynchronous tasks. Two or more processes are set to run synchronously if the second one starts after the first one ends and so on. Process 1 it starts and ends then process 2 will start and when it will end then process 3 will start. However, if the second process doesn't wait for the first one to complete and starts in parallel or concurrently, then those processes run asynchronously. For example, these process 1, 2 and 3, if they run in parallel or concurrently, then they will be called asynchronous. In a real world example, suppose you are in a queue to get a movie ticket. You can't get one until everybody in front of you gets one. So this is asynchronous process. However, if you are in a restaurant and order food, other people can order their food too. They don't have to wait for your food to be cooked and served before they can order as the process of taking orders, cooking, serving them is being handled by number of waiters, chefs, etc. And the whole process is running asynchronously. And the second topic is CPU bound tasks and IO bound tasks. The task which requires a lot of number crunching and uses a lot of CPU on your computer are called CPU bound tasks. The examples are image processing, calculations, etc. However, the task which wait for inputs or a process to end and sit idle without using any CPU are called IO bound tasks. The examples are reading in the files, downloading the files from web, etc. So multiprocessing is mostly used for CPU bound tasks and for IO bound tasks we generally use threading. I will be making the next video on threading and will provide the link in the description. If you want to be notified about that video please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Moving on, why do we need multiprocessing in Python? Multiprocessing sidesteps the global interpreter log or GIL. GIL was implemented in Python to handle a memory management issue but as a result Python is limited to using a single processor. So due to this log Python code is to execute only one thread at a time using one CPU. This picture illustrates it. For example if your code has three threads due to this Python GIL the three threads will run synchronously and it will use only one CPU. However, you can use multiprocessing to bypass this GIL and you can utilize all of your CPUs to run the different processes. Now I will first show you an example of using multiprocessing in old way and then in a new way using process pool executors and therefore we will be using multiprocessing on a real world example in which we will be passing some PDF files. Let's start coding. We will be importing time and then we will be setting the start time start time is equal to time dot time and then we will define a function called print underscore square it will take a number and, and then let's add the sleep time so that we can see the difference of multiprocessing and then we will be doing print f number Where's a number and then we will print square of 2 and to check how much time will it take we will be saying end time dot time and then we will be adding print and it took round of and minus start
now let's run it for two numbers for two and three so if we run it i have got a error forgot to add a closing bracket here and if you run it two squares is four it took 2.01 seconds so since we have run two function it has taken two seconds we can also check the process id of each process and for that we will be importing os and here we will be adding another print statement that will say print f process id is os dot get pid and now if you run it so here if you have a look the process id for both the task is similar it is 22370 it means when we run this script both the functions are running synchronously and the second function is waiting for the first one to finish and that is why it has taken 2 seconds so now we will be using multi processing firstly i will be using the old method which involves a longer code but this will help you to understand it better later on we will be moving to a new method using process pool executors so we will be doing the import for multi processing from multi processing import process multi processing is an inbuilt module so you do not have to install anything and now we will be deleting these lines and we will be creating two processes p1 is equal to process and the target will be the name of the function print underscore square and since this function take argument we will have to pass the arguments like this in a list and then we will be doing another process and its name will be p2 and let's say the argument for this is 4 and then we will do p1 dot start and p2 dot start now if we run it oh here it is target and here it is target so if we run it now you see it has printed this last line and it shows it took 0.02 second and then it moves to the functions this is because when one of the method was running it moves to another one and eventually move to the last statement but this is not what we want so we will be using the join method and for that we will be doing p1.join and p2.join and now if you run it it only took 1 second earlier without multi processing it has taken 2 seconds but if we use multi processing it, it just take 1 second and if you look at the process ids the process ids for both the processes are different it's 22424 for one of them and double to 4 to 5 for the other one now if you want to run it 10 times for that we will be using a for loop we will be doing for i in range 1 to 11 we'll be moving this here and then the process will be equal to and the args will be i and we will get rid of this and all these lines and then we will be doing p dot start since we will be using the join method we will be have to create a list and then we will be appending this list with each process and here we will be doing for process in processes process dot join and now let's run it and see it only took 1 second and however we have a 1 second sleep and we are running each method for 10 times but still with multi processing it took only 1 second so in this example we created the processes manually and then ran them now we will be moving to the another method where we will be using the process pool executor which will make it easier to run multi processing with fewer lines of code process pool executor is not a part of multi processing module it is in concurrent dot future so we will be importing 
concurrent dot futures import concurrent dot futures and we will not be needing this for now so we can uncomment it and then we'll get rid of these lines and here we will be using the context manager with concurrent dot futures dot process pool executor as executor then we will be using the submit method to create a future object and for that we will be doing p1 is equal to executor dot submit and then the function and then pass in the arguments and similarly we will be doing another p2 and let's say 3 and then we will be using result method to execute the function p1 dot result and p2 dot result and if we run it it only took a little over one second now let's say we want to run it for 10 times for that we will be creating a range of numbers that will be range 1 to 11 and now we will be using list comprehension to create the future object results is equal to executor dot submit print underscore square of number for number n numbers and finally to run it we will be doing for f in concurrent dot futures dot as completed results we will be doing f dot result and if you run it so here you can see that it ran for 10 time in just over 3 seconds if you have a closer look it printed out result for 1 to 4 first and then move to the next because my system is a 4 core processor and instead of using this we can also use the map function here we will be doing results is equal to executor dot map and we will be mapping the function with the list and then we will be doing for result in results result and this is lesser lines of code and it also take only three seconds so you can use this method also uh, so now we will try to implement multiprocessing in a real world example to see multiprocessing in action we will be choosing a cpu bound task and for that i will be merging 10 pdf file using pypdf2 so i have created this code beforehand and let me walk you through the code here i have imported pypdf2 and rest of these imports you are familiar from our last example and then i am using a pdf file with the name list.pdf and it has got 21 pages and to keep it simple i am merging this list.pdf for 10 times so our resulting pdf will be having 210 pages with 21 pages of this pdf repeating one after another and to do that i have created an empty list with the name of files and then i have added list.pdf to this empty list for 10 times and then we are looping through each file and then looping through each page and then creating a output file with the name of list underscore merge dot pdf now first of all we will run it without using the multiprocessing and for that i will be just running it and we will wait for a while and see how much will it take so it took 11.4 seconds to complete and now we will be using multiprocessing i have already imported concurrent dot future so we will be changing this to a function so let's name it define merge underscore pdf and it will be taking a file as an argument and then we will be doing with concurrent dot futures dot process pool executor as exe 
executor and then we will be using executor dot map merge underscore pdf and then files and now if we run it so it completed in 2.82 seconds so now you have seen multiprocessing in a real world example and i hope it solves most of your queries Another advantage of using concurrent.futures is that you can easily switch between multiprocessing and threading. If you are wondering what threading is, I will post the next video about threading. So stay tuned. So as I was saying, you can change process with thread here and if you run it, it took a little over 4.3 seconds since it is a CPU bound task, multiprocessing is a better option to use in this script however if it would have been a io bound task threading would have taken lesser time so using concurrent futures you can play around and easily decide what is better for your process this is it for this video if you have any doubts leave it in the comment section below and i will try my best to resolve them if you have enjoyed our video please hit the like button and share it with someone who might find it helpful if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for future notifications. Bye bye for now. Take care.